Welcome, 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 guys, to the first ever podcast. I'm Ruben Unije, your host. This is my co-host. Tyler Johnson, you feel me? First ever episode on the Rupil. Hey, it's lit, it's lit, it's lit. It's lit. Damn. So one, man. Yeah, no cursing, though. No cursing. We definitely no got to chill on that. No F-bombs. None of that. See if we can blurp, blurp it out. You know how we doing it. Yeah, children, but. Children of God. <laughs> no cap. <laughs> but, you, you know, with this being the first ever podcast, I feel like, you know, we got to let y'all know the MO, like our theme, you know, what we're about, you know, what you can expect. You feel me? Like. My boy Tyler, I really picked him as a co-host, believe it or not, because I don't know what to expect from him. I really don't. You know I mean? The unexpected is always the best, though, you feel me? Bruh. Bruh. You never know what you're going to get. You never know what you're going to get. Bro, cringe, bro. But, like, you feel me? That's my dog, you know what I'm saying? Like, And I'm glad he's my co-host. You know, we're a bunch, you know, we're both student athletes at uh, University of Houston, we play football, so we have that perspective as, like, you know, a football player, you know. So we're going to be mainly talking about sports. So with us talking about sports, we're going to have, like, authentic, you know, good opinions. You know what I'm saying? Not only on sports, you know. We're going to – right now we're going to work on this, like, show format. So I'm thinking, like, towards the end of the show, like, doing, I don't know if I told you this yet, but doing, like, just – Random news across, for like, sure, the world. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, just because, you know, like, I feel like if I was a viewer, I would get bored of just hearing sports. Like, now, especially as a, uh, the episodes increase, you're finna get a whole lot of new sauce from us, too. The sauce. The sauce. sauce. Hey, there's never too much sauce. There's never too much sauce. And one thing about us, it's a Matrix-free zone. <laughs> no cap. Our our podcast is called The Root Pill. We're really taking something off the matrix with the red pill. If you know, you know, you know. So this is like strictly, you know, nobody's puppeteering me saying, do this, do that. I'm just over here off the dome with my dog, Tyler, you know. So y'all know the vibes, you know, good, authentic news and opinions. You know, y'all going to love us, you know. Tyler, anything else you want to add, bro? Um, Yeah, man. Like, overall, if you just want to, like, kick back, relax, chill after you get off work or even – if you want to catch your us, lunch break, exactly. You feel like me? if you want to be at work, catch us at lunch break. You feel me? You always gonna get some type of interesting topic to talk about. Also, we'll be talking about factual news as well, so you get like a different take from us, from real primary sources, people, student athletes. We're already in the in the uh, in the field making doing a little doing a little biz. You feel me? And not even just that, we're bigger than student athletes. Like this is just gonna be one stream of news that y'all can get from us. You know, eventually we're gonna build on this and have actual like maybe pop news maybe news about stocks you know you never know but right now we're just gonna see what you guys like what you guys you know don't like and uh you know we're gonna move on we're gonna move with your opinion but the first topic of the day you know we go to ua so we you know we we're involved in this we got to talk about this we have to talk about this the move to the big 12 why is that important what's next for teams like us, Houston and Cincinnati and other teams that moved them to the Big 12. Like, what does that mean for us? What does all this conference realigning really mean? Mm-hmm. And what's next for all that? What's next for all these teams? Like, so for me, like the way I view this, like what's next for Houston and uh Cincinnati, UCF, all those teams, like just nothing. Cause this has been done the whole like, since college football existed, there have been realignments. Like, all it is that they're going to get these teams that, you know, may have been in a group of five conference are going to get a chance to get a bigger, you know, budget to get better facilities, to get better players. So it's really just evening out the playing field at the end of the day. So all you just don't see Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, Georgia, you know, it's like, okay, you may have, you know, a Houston – Go Cougs in it, you know what I'm saying? You may have, you may have, you know, a Cincinnati. You never know. Like that's what that's what that's doing. But also with it diluting, not I want to say diluting the play, but like with it like evening out the playing field. You know, 
that's gonna make it better content for their fans, in my opinion. Like for me, like right now I'm a player, but like when I do retire, you know, and and I'm gonna be a casual viewer, be like, you know, I, I can tune into any game and be like, all right, this game's interesting. You know what I'm saying? And then for these teams that made the jump, I'm telling you right now, for the first for first hand uh, perspective, like it's a big year. All those teams who made the jump, their feeling is like, dang. It's like you go to a new school, you know, like you're in there, you're the new kid on the block. They're gonna see what like what are you about? They're gonna try to yeah. test your gangster. <laughs> sure. no, no, for real. They're, they're gonna try to they're gonna try to do something, you know what I'm saying? Not do something, but like they're gonna all, a lot of eyes are gonna be on you, you know? You're gonna be looked at, you know, like oh, are you really like, did you deserve this upgrade? Just like Houston, we are too. So yeah. there's a lot of I know all these kids are working harder than they ever worked. You know what I'm saying? Like, shout out to uh, Lil Baby harder than ever. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be it's gonna be interesting this next year with this big green lineman happening. Yeah. So, uh, my take is um, the schools that are going into the Big 12. Um, the pres- Talking to the mic more, man. My bad. The president's. Okay, move. Okay, I I ain't want to break it. You feel me? I ain't want to break the mic. Tyler, I, 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 I'm, I'm too strong, man. I ain't, ain't want to break the mic. Hey, this is really WWE. I don't know if y'all can really see on the camera, but this is, I call him WWE because he really looks like a WWE character. Like hey, y'all, y'all, y'all are gonna see in more videos like him <laughs> in tank tops and all that. Summertime, you know, guns out, sun out, gun out. Once we got the vlogs coming yeah, and you're, shit you're too. See, you're gonna see a lot more. And ch- I chill out on the cussing a little bit, Tyler. Of course, I got you. <laughs> this is my second time. Too. But um, I think yeah, a lot of people are expecting a lot. Um, fans, presidents, coaches included, players. We all really expecting a lot. Um, so making this big leap. I call it a big leap, in my opinion. Some I, I genuinely don't think some people are ready uh, to move in. Like for example, like BYU, like I, 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 in their conference they play pretty well, but overall, like can they really compete with the mm. likes of TCU? Hey, 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 Oklahoma State. Hey, hey, now, hey, now, let's talk about that. Hey, a lot of people think you know it's sweet. BYU, what, what were they? Independent. <sighs> Like, were they, like, in the same, like, just, like, Notre Dame or something, like, some independent? Up, some up there. Maybe, I maybe Mountain West, nigga? I don't, I don't maybe, know. Maybe. I don't know. You can't say that on air, bro. You cannot. Like, you have to, like. We can blur it out. Bro, you got to vibe. We can blur it out. Okay. But you got to vibe. <laughs> we can vibe. We can vibe. You got to vibe. You got to vibe. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro. I brought them on. Hey, <laughs> hey we got to, like, if there's a way. Yeah. And my editing <laughs> skills are on point. They got to be where I can run this back. Mm-hmm. So when we first started, I said, I don't know what to expect from them. Because look at him now. My boy's cursing up a storm. But, yeah, nah, that's a, that's a good point you made with, mm-hmm. with BYU. Like, is BYU, like, are they going to be able to, like, live up to the competition? But that's the same way people think about Houston. Exactly. The same way, you know. So mm-hmm. it's like, that goes for everybody. You know, And that really shows that the that the whole college football has forever changed. Because, like, now, like, Texas and Oklahoma are trying to go to uh, the SEC. After this next season, you know, because it's conference realignment mm-hmm. stuff. Hey, and you went to UT. Yeah, I went to UT. You know, like, did they care um, about that SEC stuff or not? Nah? Like, um, like the the staff and all that. Like, was there any talk about that when y'all were there? Like, anybody yeah. talk about SEC or anything? Yeah. So originally, about about two years ago, um, when the rumors and stuff about um the departure of OU and UT to leave yeah. the Big Twelve to go into SEC. Yeah. It was a it was a huge rumor that came out in the summer of uh twenty twenty one. Um when I found out about it, um basically them two teams, U T and OU, they were down. They were down to leave. It's just the, they had to pay back so much money. They was like, you know what? Like if we can make a deal where we can get out of here free, yeah. no debt in a couple years, even though our record might I don't know. It could be extremely good. It could yeah. be extremely bad. Maybe even mediocre. Yeah. But the thing is, they didn't want to pay back the school seventy-two million dollars, basically. Seventy-two M's. Se- seventy-two M's. That's OD. They acting like they didn't make that in a year. Bro. That's OD. I kind of get that though. They didn't want to be in debt. That's OD. All that the risk. Oh, they pay. They pay money to lose. They have a losing record. You know what I mean? Like, there's hey. a lot of pressure. Speaking of pressure and losing. You remember the uh you seen the 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 women's uh <laughs> basketball uh national championship mm-hmm, LSU LSU against uh Iowa mm-hmm. 
Hey, what do you think about how, like, some people uh, on social media try to get mad at, like, Angela Reese for doing this? I just think To it's... Caitlin Clark at the end of the game, you know, because Caitlin Clark did this at Iowa's bench. You know, what I do you think, think about that? I think that? it's very petty and salty of the fans. Um, yeah. Prior to her doing that, there was already trash talk going on on the other side. Yeah. Like, nobody wanted to say nothing. Yeah. Um, I just think it's kind of odd how after they won – I yeah. still want to say something for a trash talk. Like, she didn't do nothing physical. She didn't do no yeah. crazy remarks. She just having yeah. a good time. She got a dub and trash It's a bunch of softies who never played a sport exactly. a day in their life. They don't know what it takes. Like They don't know. That's the competitive edge. Come on now. The thing is now, it's like everybody trying to get up participation trophies now like even jill biden talking about yeah <laughs> bro let's talk about jill like, biden saying we should invite the runner-up no to the white house no 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 nobody wants to go to even sleepy joe's house mm, anyway exactly you know what i'm saying so like how about no I, and i like how angela really uh, my bad angela reese handled that you know what i'm saying and she was like you know we'll just go to barack and mm. michelle house Ooh. stop playing ah! Well up. Hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Barack, hey. let's go. Hey, Barack. Yeah, hey, but nah, it's crazy. Shout out to UConn, man, mm -hmm. for winning it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, her cousin was actually one of the players on the team, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. That's actually crazy to uh, speak of. But uh, I love how this uh, this game, the Iowa against LSU, you know, brought a lot more attention to women's sports, especially basketball, like, I remember them talking about, like, not too long ago that they had to fly commercial in the, in the WNBA. They had to fly commercial. That's crazy. We don't even do that. And we're college football. Like, WNBA flying commercials. Like, wow. you're a professional athlete. <laughs> that's new. Like, that's crazy. But, like, I love how, like, this game is bringing more, you know, of a spotlight to that and more attention, you know, to women's sports and to show you that it can be entertaining, you know. Mm. You can have just as much fun watching that than the men's. Because, honestly, I heard more about the women's, you know, game than I did the men's the whole time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, hey, shout out to the women. Kudo to women for That's that. That's a good point. Yeah, bro, for real. Shout out to the women, though, for real. You know what I'm saying? But uh, They put in just as much work as we do. No know? cap. No cap. No cap. That, hey, that's real. That's real spill, you know. But the Ryan Garcia. Javante Tank Davis, man. Like, this is one of the points I was waiting to get to today, man. I was really excited. I watched a Showtime preview yesterday on the game, uh, on the match. Like, what's going to happen? Like, who did, you know, like, the both the come-ups. First thing first, who do you think is winning? Right now. They, Straight off the bat. They got, they got the odds at 75% Javante. Um, 75% is crazy. 75 is crazy. <laughs> hey man, seventy five is insane. My dog Ryan Garcia, man, seventy five is insane. He could be the underdog, but I'm gonna just like you know what I'm saying. I'm gonna make the safe pick. I'm gonna go with Javante. 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 Mm -hmm. I'm going with the safe. Pick. I definitely uh, think Javante is gonna win, but I can see Ryan Garcia getting like you know what I'm saying a couple you know ooh ooh okay mm -hmm. Garcia okay Garcia. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, bah! Knockout, maybe like the ninth round. You know what I'm saying? He's like, tired. It may be like Shit. some late round knockout. Like, <laughs> and that's crazy because the thing about it, one of them gets, like, at the end of the day, one of them is losing, like, is yeah. leaving with a losing record. So, yeah, Not yeah, losing yeah, record, yeah. but yeah. with a Somebody got to lose. They both undefeated right Somebody now. Somebody has to take the zero off the record. You know what I'm saying? So, like, Javante or Ryan. I ain't gonna lie, Javante just got that dog. He got that dog. That's what I'm saying. Hey, like, he grew up like. Hey, they both grew up <laughs> poor, but he just grew up different. Mm -hmm. Like, he grew up having to uh, fend for myself. You feel me? Daddy in jail, mom not around. Mm -hmm. Like, grew up in the gym. You know what I'm saying? They both did, but like, hey, I don't know. I just Javante just got that it. He got that it factor. He got that it. He got that it for sure. <laughs> Man, I, I had that same nah. uh, that same feeling with the Tyron Woodley, Jake Paul. Yeah. I mean, I thought, man, prior, prior yeah, to – I don't know how Tyron yeah. Woodley lost that, but, like, yeah. that made me think it was rigged. But. Me too. I was about to say, like, prior to Jake Paul's last fight, latest fight, I used to think it was rigged too, but I don't know. Yeah, maybe it was real. Probably was. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. What's next for, like, let's say Javante if he loses. What will be next for him? 
I mean, he not gonna he not gonna retire after he li- who who wanna retire after an L like that though. Yeah, facts. He not retire. Gotta be a rematch. He's doing a rematch for sure, and he can make at least double the money type shit if he gotta come back and get it. If Javante loses, I'll be shocked. I can't lie. And I thought like what's next term was like what you said. Yeah, a rematch. It has yeah. to be a rematch. You know, if it's not a rematch, then like your whole legacy goes down to you losing to this mm-hmm. kid who's been calling you out since mm-hmm. she was nineteen. I wouldn't want to leave. Nineteen. Know, you know what I'm saying? But if he wins, more the same. Probably retire soon after a couple more fights. He'd be the face of boxing. Nobody can deny his greatness, his legacy. Yeah. You know. And Ryan Garcia, if he loses, whew. He's gonna have to like Man. pipe it down a little bit, but he's probably gonna be more into TikTok, more into social media after losing. <laughs> you know, TikTok. because he can't be the face of boxing with an L on your record. You know, okay, this it's is hard. This, this is my opinion, right? And if he wins, hold on. And if he wins, I say, hey, it'd be the craziest thing in boxing Man. since I don't, I can't even remember. Probably. Klitschko and Anthony Joshua fighting. Klitschko. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Klitschko. Vladimir Klitschko. That, that, yeah. that, 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 that was a bad he, guy. He, that was yeah. a bad guy. But what do you think? What do you think will happen? <laughs> Ooh, that, yeah, he was like, what do you think is next for like Garcia if he wins or loses? I, I'm gonna be real. If, if I think I think he has less to stress about if he if he gets an L. Yeah, I, I think it's more Javante if he if he takes. Oh yeah, for L, sure. It's way more. Javante's at seventy five percent odds, you know, to win. Yeah. So like, you know what I'm saying? If Ryan it's Garcia definitely... loses, I really just think he's gonna eat it, take on the chin, just yeah. come back, try to get that rematch before his rematch, legacy. lose again, and then just probably beat everybody else. Yeah, like, they retire. Like I did it for my family, get them yeah. rich. Like, I'm be real, like, like yeah. If Ryan really loses, man, I really it's, it's gonna be an L on his record, but I really don't think that's. Because that people expect him to lose, kind of. Yeah. You know, I Plus feel he that. Leaving with the bag. He, he's he's underdog and he's leaving with millions. Leaving like with millions. This whole point, he's like his parents spent his like their final like life savings on like him to go to the national tournament back when he was a kid, and he won it though. But like that should tell you, like, give you a little insight to like why he does this. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's a fight. I'm definitely can't wait to see. Pretty sure it's like April 22nd. I want to say, and. uh I'm gonna be tuned in, bro. We gotta watch that together, bro. Hey, might, we might to live stream that. Never ooh, know. ooh, my hey, might have to live stream. I'm down. I just gotta figure out who we're gonna like. Mm-hmm. How we're gonna do that on Twitch? Maybe Twitch. Would it be illegal to live stream like a boxing match, or we have to do like our reactions? We probably just gotta do a reaction. But. Yeah, like live reactions to the yeah. to the match. I'm definitely down to do that, like on YouTube Live or some shit. I'm um, yeah, me too. Oh dang, I have to burp that up. But Lamar Jackson. Like, what's up with him not getting this contract? All he wants is a fully guaranteed contract, mm-hmm. and they're not trying to give it to him. Me, personally, I think it might be collusion. I think, like, no way a former MVP, like, two years ago can't get a fully guaranteed contract. One of the young, youngest winningest quarterbacks in NFL history mm. can't get a guaranteed contract. When we just seen Pat Mahomes get one. Deshaun Watson, damn near get one. That like, boy, yeah, Deshaun. So what's almost, happening? He literally, Deshaun literally had a whole, whole problem, a whole problem with mas- getting massages for masseuses, and he's <laughs> getting a full guaranteed Ooh. contract. What's going on? I don't know. Uh, and why can my boy Lamar get? He's being a perfect guy. Something uh, got to be collusion. I, like, if he doesn't get this contract, I say what's next for Lamar. It's like, yeah, he might have to take it on the chin and sign for lower somewhere else. But if I'm Lamar and I do that, okay, I sign for lower, I'm I'm going dumb. I'm showing the league they're retarded. Mm. Oh, I can't say that. They're they're stupid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to get the biggest third contract I can. I'll probably sign the next contract for two years just so I can go Look crazy. Quick. quick bag. Mm-hmm. Two years, $60 million. Fully guaranteed two years, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Something like that. Fully guaranteed, go crazy. Come back. I need a five year, five hundred million. Five hundred million fully guaranteed. If you don't do that, we know y'all have something against mm-hmm. me. And I say at that point, if I'm Lamar, I'm joining the XSFL as a part Ooh. owner. I'm paying, I'm getting myself paid the highest salary in the world for all XFL players. And we're gonna take that league to to the moon. Try to get any any NFL players I can to join it. 
because obviously they're doing collu- collusion against us. So at that point, you gotta take the power back. You know, bring it back. I literally, people. I love that statement you just said. Yeah, it just it literally just opened my mind. Yeah, um, okay. Because NFL, it, it's a bureaucracy, but at the same time, it's a business mm. at the end of the day. So as long as you can outcompete, outbid your your audience, what's up? What's up for grabs? I didn't even think about that, bro. And then mm-hmm. also imagine imagine being one of the highest paid players, going over to the XFL, yeah. playing in your own on your own team that you own. Like, no cap. Hey, that. nah, that's crazy. Like Mahomes is, is a owner of a of a part time owner of a baseball team. Why can't you be a part time owner of an XFL and get, get, get your pay for yourself? No cap. Like, Sign what? your own checks. What? Nah, I that's like some, that. I love that. I love what you just said right there. But here we go. The last three minutes of the show. We're gonna mm-hmm. be quick. We're gonna say we're gonna have the NFL draft sleepers, our top three draft sleepers, Heisman early favorites, top three. One sleeper, we're going to be quick in and out of here. I'm hungry. I got to get this burger. First ever episode. I hope you guys are liking it. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Please subscribe. Please tune in. We love y'all. You know what I'm saying? But here we go. All right, so my top three dra- uh, draft sleepers. I'm going to go quick. Darnell Wright, Deuce Vaughn, Derek Paris. Darnell Wright, right tackle for Tennessee. I feel like nobody's talking about him enough. And as a right tackle myself, I, I study a lot of these offensive linemen, and his technique is probably the best out of everybody in the draft class, you know. And mm. he shows it on a consistent basis. He's been a consistent starter. He's dominant in the run, dominant in the pass. You know, nobody gets past him. He should definitely be going top three. He's one of the better players in the draft, if not the best. Deuce Vaughn, you might mm. be 5'5", five, five, but he ran a 4'4". Four, four. And for two consistent years, he had over 1,400 in total yards. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he's a guy that you get him in the NFL, he's like a firecracker. He'll go crazy probably three, four years, and he's done. But as a team, get that for the lowest you can and let him go crazy for those three, four years, maybe five years. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Just like Darren Sproles type of guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let him, have, let him have his little chime. Then Derek Parrish, our teammate, you know what I'm saying? He's a dog. He can play three different positions, fullback, the end, tight end, long snapper, whatever you need him to play. That's four. <laughs> but whatever you need him to play, he can play. You know what I'm saying? Had a ran a four five forty, had a four flat or four point oh nine uh five ten five. Like that's insane. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like it's, it's crazy. We know going against him and watching him in games, like he's a beast. He had four sacks against Texas Tech in one game. Yeah, like, he had the most sacks in the NCAA until, uh, upon his injury. You know, like he who had the most sacks? Who does that? He's really gonna be a gadget for anybody. I feel like I can see him going to the Patriots. But yeah, those are my top three. What about you? For me, I'm gonna go with uh, Tate Martell. He's a uh, I'm, I'm trolling right oh now. Oh, my God. I I'm was trolling. like, this guy can't be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take more two. Don't know what to expect. Nah, but who's your top three for no, real? But, um, I'm going to go with Rashawn Johnson for okay. sure. Um, he's been playing a running back at UT now for uh, four years. He originally was a quarterback in high school. One of the best. Uh, he had the most uh, passing touchdowns and yards at his high school, Port Nations Grove. Um, but he switched to running back his freshman year because he felt like he could bring more value to the team like that. So he's been playing running back there for about four years. And then once Bijan came in, they've both been hamming the, the, the line. But you feel me? Running running the ball in. So obviously, you know, Bijan's going to be mm-hmm. first round, obviously. Like, he's – he's. So who are your other two sleepers after Roshan? Uh, I mean, I, I'll fight, man, my, my nigga D'Anthony. Please stop cursing. My bad, my bad. D'Anthony, My bad. <laughs> I, I do. I do. Da. Uh, da. Four four for Houston. So he plays uh, in DN uh, at University of Houston. I'm um, glad you said him. He's a sleeper. He his his get off is unimaginable. Like otherworldly. I, t- I go against him. Hey, we be fighting though. We be going back to back in practice. He's good. He got me better. I got him better. He's a dog for sure. Yeah, he's a dog, <laughs> man. Um, a dog. Da. I, I know he's going to be picked up somewhere in the league. Like he he's just, he, got, he got. Who he got else you got? Him. Who else you got? You got the athleticism. And then shit, number three. Man. I'm going to be real. 
I'm be real. What's the quarterback's name at uh at Georgia? Stetson, Stetson Bennett. I'm be real. Like like. Yeah, that's a good one. I, I don't think he's gonna be picked up early, but that's a good draft sleeper. He, I think he would be great in the NFL. That's a good draft sleeper. You I like that. I mean? Stetson Bennett is a good one. That's a really good one. I should have thought about that one. <laughs> that's a good one. But um, now for the top three Heisman favorites and one sleeper, I got Marvin Harrison, uh, Quentin Harris, and Caleb Williams. My one sleeper is Joe Milton for Tennessee. Caleb Williams, you already know. He already won it, so got to be one of the favorites. Marvin Harrison, they're saying he's the best receiver already for next year's draft. Quentin Harris, he was a favorite for last year's draft. You already know. And uh, my sleeper, Joe Milton, taking over the reins at Tennessee after Hendon Hooker, who was about to be a draft, uh, probably, I mean, I draft, a Heisman favorite, you know what I'm saying, was going to probably win it. He's taking over the reins of Tennessee, so – I definitely think he's a sleeper. Who do you got? You know what? I got uh, – I really I, – I just got two for uh, the ones that are sleepers. I think it's going to be either Quinn Ears or uh, Caleb Williams. Like, like no doubt. It's going to be one of them two. But for a sleeper, you know what? You know what? Man, they're running back in there in a minute. I'm going to go with my boy Alton Mikowski. Yeah. My boy Alton, come on now. He, uh, Alton's a dog coming off the ACL. Yeah, so he uh, – about a year. See, I really could have yeah. used – a bunch of cute players about what it to. They're all my guys, and they're all good. And like, no, I do age. I age. could have said Elias Bell, like you know, what I'm saying yeah, for man. my draft sleepers, but for sure, like I understand Alto for sure. Like he's definitely a sleeper. He was uh, he was freshman of the, of the year. No cap, uh, Alto was American a dog. Conference, so I actually Alto went in it, if not this year, the year yeah. after. Yeah, for sure. Like you know, if all... he's still in college. Mm, nah. mm. Real no talk, cap. real spill. My dog Tyler's been real. We got to, you know what I'm saying? Escape the Matrix. With Escape the, the Matrix. The, the root pill. You got to escape the root The pill. You know? Hey, we're going to make this more consistent for y'all. Mm -hmm. We hope you liked it. Leave your uh, comments and mm -hmm. whatever, you know, you think we can improve on sure. below. And, yeah, let's do it. Uh, thank you, guys. For sure. Peace.